So you'd like to know how to withhold the correct amount of federal withholding from your employee's pay? Here's the extensive video that shows everything you need to know about doing that. So let's talk about that. You need to gather information from your employee. You know, Say you're running a small business and you just want to make sure that you're calculating federal correctly. There are calculators out there online. We're going to compare the Excel file that I've created to do all this with ADP's calculator, a fantastic company. They have a great calculator where you can simulate a paycheck once you put in all the information that you need. So let's talk about the information that you need. You need to start by having your employee fill out a W-4. I've done some extensive videos about what is called the new W-4, which is a W-4 from 2020 or later, where they ask for more extensive questions um, than they did on the old W-4 that's from 2019. There is a question in the payroll file about whether or not you're using a current year W-4 or not. And that means current year W-4 2020 or later. Um, and you should have your employees fill out uh, a new W-4, it's important. But some of them might, might have been working for you for a long time, since before 2019, and they just never got around to filling out a new W-4. They have an old one with a number of exemptions is what they put on that one. That's a different kind of data entry, but you have to account for potential for both in this file. And so that's what we've done. But generally you should be filling out a new W-4. We're gonna use the new W-4 in the example in this video. So the, the W-4 here has questions about your filing status, Put that in there, whether or not they're working two jobs, check this box if they're working two jobs or not to so check for that. Then number of dependents, which is times in amounts. So you need to put a dollar amount here. It's not like one, two, or three. It's 2,000 times the number of qualifying children, 500 times the dependents. You get a total dependent credit amount in dollars here. Any other income they have goes here in step 4A, and any other deductions they have go in Step 4B, and there is a schedule on page three to go through how to figure that amount out if you have extra deductions. Any additional federal withholding per pay period would go here. All this information, you log it into the Excel file. You have to gather it, basically. So in order to gather it, this is the area where we're gathering that information from the W-4. And you choose the filing status, you put that other income amount from 4A here, other deductions amount from 4B here, whether or not they check that box or not, yes or no, you choose that. And that total dependent amount, 2,500 goes there. That's the information from the W-4. If they fill out a pretty extensive W-4, that's what you're gonna get. Once you have that, you can start working in the actual pay period and figuring out how much needs to come out. And these are all the formulas related to actual federal tax. There are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. I found about 12 or 13 different layers or stages of having to use formulas in different columns to calculate this. You could condense it a little bit more, but, but there are about 10 steps basically to go through here. So what do you do? First thing you do is you annualize the wage amount, you know, how much salary or how much hourly times hourly wage amount was there for the period and multiply that number times the number of pay periods. You can change pay periods and, and cycles in this, in this file by doing that here in the matrix. But we're gonna go with a weekly pay cycle here. So cell B4, BR4 happens to be the gross wages for the pay period federal taxable gross wages as calculated by looking at the information about the employee, which is all over here, that you enter in for each pay period, how much did they make? We have this person making $2,500 here in a week. If we change this number to say 1,800, then our gross wages are gonna change, our taxable wages are gonna change, everything's gonna change, as you can see right here. Now all of a sudden, the annual taxable wages are 93,000. So that's first step one is annualize your wages. Next step, you have to adjust this wage amount by other pieces of information that are coming in from that W-4 and also from publication 15T, which 
gives you the steps that you need to go through to figure out what your true annualized wage amount is that you're going to be as a base for figuring out how much withholding you should pull out of there. So this is um, this is quite helpful uh, in that it, it shows you all the stages and I put these stages into these formulas. So adjusting the gross wages is what you do next. And you do that by um, adding things like the other income. And then you're going to end up reducing the deductions in this one, this column, the next column over, which says that it looks for this deduction amount that you automatically get, this 12900 or 8600 if you're single married filing separately. It reduces that and it also reduces the 10,000 of other deduction amounts that we added in here in our W-4. And you end up getting an adjusted wage, basically. So this is becomes your base for what you're gonna be using when you have a new W-4 is this formula here, as figured out by taking actual gross wages and adding extra income and reducing for other reductions. And that's what you get. So this here is really what your base is as you start to do all these other formulas. And here's where it gets kind of redundant and very, very cumbersome. If you were doing this by hand, it's what computers were made for, which are all these different formulas based on what your filing status is and whether or not you checked the box. And these formulas are shown here in the publication 15T in different areas, but they're like this, basically. It's giving you the percentage method. It's showing you that on an annual basis, if your income was below a certain amount, what percentage it's gonna be. So I turned all of these tables into these formulas. This is what these formulas look like. I actually use chat GPT to also help automatically uh, look at the table image and help adjust the formula that I had written from last year. I found it hallucinated once and one number was off in one of these formulas. That is the only error I've found so far. It was pretty great otherwise, but this is the formula that ends up kicking out in, in this layered vertical way. I type them in a more condensed way when you see it like this, you know it probably came out of chat uh, GPT data analysis. So what this is doing is it's looking at that income level, you know, 16,300. This is for the box, no check, um, married filing jointly, right? So which table is that? That's this one here. Married filing jointly, box is not checked. The box is checked. One is the one over here. And that's This formula box is checked, is this one, 14,600 and 14,600 shown up here, right? All this. Now, so what this does is this gives you what the provisional withholding is by doing that formula for all six of these tables, all three statuses, and whether or not the box is checked or not, creates six, six scenarios for these six amounts. Then you have the formulas for the old W-4 because you still have to accommodate for those people that didn't fill out a new W-4. And they're using this wage base because the adjusted wage base is slightly different because you don't have information that you got from the new W-4. You don't have that on the old W-4. So it has to come up with an adjusted wage with limited information. And then you run the other formulas, which are also in the publication 15T, which also look very, very similar like this. Okay, so, and then you divide all that by the number of pay periods in the year, once you put that formula in there. So you get these withholding amounts, and then you have to figure out what status the person was to figure out which one it is. Because what you're getting here is an interesting look at all the different withholding amounts based on whatever status you were. That's the beauty of looking at it in this format, is you can say, oh, the, the, the status that pays the least amount of federal tax on their you know, $99,000 uh, of $99,600 of estimated gross wages for the year taxable, that only 135 in this weekly paycheck would go if you're married filing jointly and you have only one job, basically. That's what that one is. 
all the way up to 311 if you're single or married filing separately and you have two jobs. It's, you know, it's more than two and a half times the amount, right? So pretty interesting to look at that and see what it is. You choose which one it is based on their status and you get the answer of the current federal tax withholding. So let's, I mean, we can test this one. I think I already had this one in ADP. Per pay period, $1,800. You put the pay date to a new date in the year. Federal tax is going to ask you those questions. What's their filing status, right? Actually, let's change their filing status and let's make them head of household, for example. All the dependents amounts, that $24,600, the $10,000 deduction, any additional. So we're, we just changed their status to head of household. It says that their federal um, income tax is 189.33. There's that 189.33, and we round it. So when you go back and you change their status to head of household, the answer you get is the 189, the rounded 189. This is what you get on the pay stub. But these amounts withheld, 189, 11160, 2160 for Social Security, for Medicare, you can see those are the same. Uh, so, so that's how you do it. All right, that's how you gather the information you need from the W-4 and run all these scenarios and pick the right one based on the status and based, what, based on what they entered in on their W-4. So you gather that information and verify it from the publication 15T which is final for 2024. This is the final version, should be accurate. And that's how you run all the different formulas. If you're gonna do that, you can just purchase the payroll file and, and throw all your small business information in here and use what I've built to run your small business. It's only 150 bucks or like 175 bucks if you're a new, new person that hasn't renewed with me in the past. And it's just, it's pretty great because you can see those are all the things that you need you're gonna end up getting a bunch of other questions related to whatever state you're in. I was do, using Alaska as an example. We could choose any other state, choose a crazy state like California that has a ton of different taxes. It's gonna ask you other questions about allowances on a California form. It's gonna to wanna to know if you have paid family leave, medical leave and state disability. It's gonna to wanna to know things like your state Filing status, let's call it California single. And all those things are then going to create more information, other types of withholding. Um, maybe there is no paid family medical leave. There's a California ATT tax though. It's all built into the file. Point is, is you can see that ADP's calculator also has a ton of things that you can do with that. It, it just, it's amazing how many different tax laws and types of taxes exist in all the states. So that's one of the things I've been doing here over the new year is checking every single one of them um, because many of them change. Let's do one allowance. Not exempt from this. 9974, 1980. 9974, 1980. That's right. We are matching. Anyway. That's how you calculate federal tax withholding. That's how you organize small business payroll in one Excel file. I hope you found this video helpful. Understand you need to get your employee to fill out the W-4 and estimate their annual wages appropriately to figure out what the proper withholding is and then to run that number through this gauntlet of formulas to get the one that you want. All right, good luck. Payroll should be easy. We're making it so.